This is our second video covering some additional topics on using the CDC Excel tool for thematic analysis. In this video, we are going to show you how to create your, your own coding scheme for coding your text. As you may recall from earlier videos, the tool comes with three different options for coding schemes. The epidemic coding scheme, the other health emergency coding scheme, and a blank coding scheme. We've been using the epidemic coding scheme in all of our tutorials so far. In these next two videos, we're going to show you how to create your own coding scheme that you will then load into the blank coding scheme option. This video will cover the development of a new coding scheme, and the next video will cover how to actually input those new codes into the tool. If you've already developed your own coding scheme, you can skip this video and jump into the next one. To start off creating your own coding scheme, you'll want to go back to some of the inquiry planning worksheets and review your list of questions. So we have two example questions listed here. First being, what uh, is the most common question people have about the situation? And the second is, what are ways we could share information effectively? These questions will help you start your coding scheme. If you want to identify questions from participants and you want to know what participants said about information, then you need to have a code that identifies both questions and a code that identifies the parts of the text where participants are talking about information. As a reminder, a code is a very brief label or phrase that you assign to a piece of text to explain the meaning in your own words. As an example, if we were going to code this piece of text from Humpty Dumpty, we may include codes like injuries occurring, antiquated emergency response, and ineffective healthcare services. Returning to our example about what questions people have about disease X and what information that they have about disease X, uh, we can take some data from the example text in the tool. For this development process, we would re recommend working in a separate Excel file with your data formatted so that each row has one sentence of your text data. We'd also recommend selecting a subset of your data to start off creating preliminary codes, which can then be ref refined through applying them to the entire set of text data. From our re research questions, we know that we are interested in what questions people have about disease X. So as we go through this text, we're going to be looking for pieces of text that have questions in them. So if we scroll down, we see uh, this piece of information in response to the facilitator question of what specifically concerns you about treatment. And we see at the end, somebody asked a question of, if we got sick, where would we go? So in the next column over, we're going to write question about treatment location or availability. And then we see that in the next row, there's another question. And how do you know that you're sick enough to need treatment? So this is also a question, but about a different topic. So now we're going to write question about symptoms and treatment. You can see from this that these preliminary codes are short, simple ways to express the meaning of the text. The goal is to be specific, yet brief enough that it is possible to use the same codes with multiple pieces of text. Going back to the example text, we have reviewed all of the sentences and created codes that briefly describe the sentences where someone is asking a question about disease X and sentences about information related to disease X. You can see from this example that you won't code every line of text with your preliminary codes because much of the text is about other things. At this point, you have a choice. If you want to stay very focused on your research questions, you can limit your codes to only capture ideas in the text related to those questions. However, if you want to consider information that relates to other ideas, you might expand your codes. While you generally want to keep the focus on your research question, one of the strengths of the thematic analysis approach is that it allows participants to bring up issues that are important to them that you may not have thought to consider. For example, if we return to the list of text segments and look for other ideas that might be broadly related to disease X, but not related to questions or information, we might add a code related to worry about disease X that would capture ideas like the disease accelerates certain things in the body, that's why we are afraid. We may then read down and see that someone says disease X does not exist. And this time we might want to add a code titled doubts about reality of disease to capture this idea. Again, whether you expand your coding beyond your research questions is your choice. The next step is organizing your coding scheme. 
if we take all of the tentative codes that we have added to this example text and then paste them into a blank spreadsheet, it's going to look like this. Now this list includes duplicate codes as uh, we use some of the same codes across multiple text segments. So we want to get a list of the unique codes. And to do that, we can select all of this, go up to the ribbon, go to data, and then select remove duplicates. You can select OK. And now it'll tell you that they've removed five duplicate values and we have 16 unique codes. So as you continue coding, you are likely to decide to add some additional codes. For example, you may come across a new question that you don't yet have a code for. Uh, when you add a new code, you may need to go back to the beginning of your text to see if there's any text that you would now code with the new codes. So the example we have described here uses a relatively short list of codes that would be easy to search through while coding and would also lend itself well to organizing during the thematic analysis phase. However, in a real analysis, you're likely to have many more than 16 codes to apply to your data. To make it easier to code and analyze the data, we usually organize our coding schemes into two levels so that codes are, break, are grouped based on some broader idea. The initial codes we have created are what we would refer to as specific codes. And those are ones that would be listed here in these columns under broad codes. In the next video, we're gonna show you how to input these codes into the tool itself. But before we can do that, we need to organize the codes into groups. To create the broad codes, we'll go through our list of preliminary codes and make a decision about how to best organize these pieces of information. Knowing that our two key topics of interest are questions and information, we can start with these two categories and go through each of these specific codes to assign them to the categories. So we might start by looking at lack of information about disease effects and move it over into the information category. For worry about disease, since this doesn't fit in either of our two current codes, we can skip this for now. Then we would look at lack of information about reinfection and move that under information. We would get to a question and move that into uh, the question category and so on. So I've skipped ahead so that all of the preliminary codes related to questions and information are now sorted into these columns. As I was going through sorting codes into the information column, I noticed that there are really two different ideas being captured by these codes. And while they're both related to information, there are different approaches to talking about information. So some of these codes are dealing with what I would term information needs, while other codes are talking about information sharing approaches or how people are actually sharing the information. So at this point, I may wanna go through and further divide up this information category. So the lack of information about disease effects, lack of information about reinfection, and need for information can all stay. But then when people are talking about getting information through printed information picked up from healthcare, information through videos, information in multiple languages, these are all things that should fit under the information sharing approaches. Now, once I've done that for um, all of the specific codes that were under information, I have my first three broad codes ready. When we go back to our original list of specific codes, we can see that what we have left over is these two additional codes. So we can decide to either make a broad category for each of these, so a worry about disease and a doubts about the reality of the disease. Um, but we could also decide to just make an other category for codes that um, are not frequent enough to need their own broad codes. And we can always decide to eventually make each of these their own category. We now have a strong preliminary coding scheme and are ready to put it to use. In the next video, we will cover how to set up this information in the tool itself.